it's a pleasure to be here. Let's get this thing started. Um, today's kind of a very special day. Well, every day special here, but today we're doing a, the beginning of a new chapter, chapter three, which uh, has a theme based on the question, what, what can we do with the derivatives? That's the theme for chapter three. I want to take just a second to look back in retrospect at the other chapters. Chapter one had some very, very important highlights. Uh, the introduction of the idea of limits. This is incredibly huge. Um, uh, we did the introduction, th you know, in several steps. We first did, uh, you know, intuitive ideas using engineer's method, uh, using the graphene method, uh, using the plug-in method, and then we write. And then, um, and then of course, we introduce uh, the definition, the, the definition of the millennium here um, that says that the limit of, as x goes to c of f of x is equal to l if and only if, and you should know this by heart, this is the definition to change the world. Uh, for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that if x is really, really close to delta, but not equal to it, that necessarily implies that uh, f will be really, really close to the limit with an epsilon. How close is You can make epsilon as close as small as you want it, as long as it's bigger than zero. That, 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 uh, these two items here were probably some of the most important highlights of chapter one. And of course, the, uh, the third item would be uh, fluency um, in these... Uh, in the, in the practice of finding limits where you practice these, uh, these techniques, engineer's method, uh, graphing method and whatnot, the definition is not so much a way of defining the limit, but a way of proving, proving the limit and proving all the famous properties. You know, the limit of the sum is some of the limits, limit of the quotient is quotient limits, etc. These are the highlights from chapter one. Now, that takes us to chapter two. Chapter two, the highlight for chapter two, of course, had to be the derivative, the slope of the tangent line uh, function. Um, and this is incredibly famous uh, definition uh, that was started off with just a secant slope Right, that's just a secant slope, and the fact that we could just add this magical ingredient on it. One magical ingredient is all it takes. Uh, x take x really, really close to c, and it turns the secant slope into a tangent slope, just like this, with one magical ingredient. It's a one-ingredient recipe, almost, so to speak. That, that had to be uh, one of the most important highlights uh, of Chapter 2, if not of the whole course, this definition. Yeah, both of these are, um, if I could highlight this, incredibly important things from Chapter 1, incredibly important things from Chapter 2. And then the other thing uh, that we did uh, for Chapter 2 was... The other super important highlight was, of course, the uh, derivative properties. Derivative properties, and of course, famous derivatives. So here we have things like product rule, quotient rule. This is all chapter 2a, two, two I'll call this 2b, 2c. Um, but again, fluency. By chapter 2, you got to be super, super good at finding derivatives. The derivative of anything that somebody throws at you, the derivative of sine of x squared, it should be automatic. The derivative of sine is cosine, cosine stuff, blah, blah, blah. Um, I won't finish it, but I'm just trying to highlight some of the most important things from Chapter 2. This definition is incredibly important. In fact, I think I, I propose a, there's a, there's a famous alternative definition that's been going around in many, many textbooks uh, using the H. In fact, that's how I learned it when I was uh, younger. But, but the more I think about it, the more I like this one. So the other one I delegated to one of the homework assignments. Uh, this one I love. We can do everything with this one. This has to be one of the highlights from Chapter 2. Famous derivative properties. You should be good with that famous, big and famous sheet. Uh, you should be able to not just know all those things, but uh, be able to prove uh, 90%, 95% of those things. We have all the ideas to prove them. Uh, the derivative properties and famous derivatives, of course, you have to be super fluent. That takes us to today, uh, chapter three, uh, where we ask not how to take derivatives. We've already asked that, how to take derivatives. We've practiced that. We know the derivative properties. We no longer are concerned with how to take derivatives, but we're concerned with what are they good for? Okay, so I could take derivatives all day. What, what's that going to get me? That's that's where we're at today. Make sense? Um... I mean, we, we've already established part of it. Part of it I established way, way at the very, very first lecture here where I said, hey, the, uh, tangent slopes, areas are ubiquitous. Everywhere you have an area problem, um, uh, calculus is concerned with it if the area is irregular. And everywhere you have an area problem, you have a slope problem. And so you can imagine how useful this may be. It's everywhere that you find areas and everywhere you have slopes, the areas are important. And then we said, every, where would that happen? Well, every time you have humans multiplying two quantities, B times C, that give you something meaningful, well, then you've got yourself an area problem. And just by dividing both things by one of these, you've got yourself a slope problem. So so the idea is huge, huge, huge. But we're actually going to do in this chapter a few examples of uh, other things that you could do with them uh, or variations of the same thing. Okay? Today we've got our first dose of what can we do what what has the derivative done for me lately today we we do our, our first dose and then um and then we'll take it from there okay how's that sound all right let me break here pause cut
You know, they say that excellent teachers sometimes just stand there and wait. And sip their coffee. All right, so uh, <clears throat> here's our first uh, installment of what is a derivative good for? So today we're entertaining the idea that the derivative is good for one, adding one more technique to our list of techniques for finding limits. See, before we had four. We had the engineer's method. We had the graphing method, the plug-in method, the rewrite method. And these were excellent ways of introducing the idea of limits. Now, if they weren't excellent ways of introducing, I wouldn't have done them. Uh, they really served their purpose. But I think I tried to emphasize their limitations. Um, you know, the engineer's method, at the end of the day, is just a guess. And uh, so it has some serious uh, uh, flaws. So on the other hand, it's a most intuitive way to actually understand the concept of limits. So it's, uh, it's pros and cons. We'll try to look at them objectively here. They're both, oh, they're all of them really good for something, but they all have some sort of weakness. The plug-in method fails so many times because you get an indeterminate form. One of those seven indeterminate, famous indeterminate forms. Zero over zero, infinity over infinity, blah, blah, blah. The rewrite is pretty good, but <clears throat> only, uh, you know, some cases when you have removal discontinuities or where you can play the conjugate game. <clears throat> so they all have their limitations. In fact, after today, I think you will see them differently. You will see them as, eh, not that great. You, you might, here's a good way to think about what we're doing today. Today we're going to add, uh, today we're going to add a fifth method here, and I'll just tell you what it is, it's LH. And, and this method will make these other ones look so silly. This is incredibly, incredibly much, much more powerful and elegant. It's got much, much deeper ideas. And those ideas, of course, we couldn't do before because we didn't know the derivative. After all, today's chapter is, what is a derivative good for? Well, one of the things that it's good for, it's going to bring us a fifth way of looking at limits. A fifth way of finding limits, as a matter of fact. And I contend that after today, you will look at the other ideas and say, eh, that was like an old bike. Eh. Those other methods are like an old uh, skateboard. Like, eh. Or maybe like one of these old cars from the dinosaur era. But today's method, today's method is called uh, L'Hopital. I think that after you see today's method, here's the way you will think about it. This is L'Hopital. And these are the old methods. This is L'Hopital, and this is the old methods. You can get with this, or you can get with that, or you can get with this, or you can get with that. Uh huh. So let me just, uh, you know, talk is cheap. Let's actually do it. What does L'Hopital do for us? Um, well, let's see. Should we just jump into the first example? Or not? I'll just tell you roughly uh, a little bit about it, and then I'll jump into the first example. So, so roughly speaking, uh, I won't tell you the whole story now because uh, you know I, I don't want to make this uh, boring. I think first we got to get to the exciting part. Um, so I'll tell you um, just enough to get us started with the first example. The 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 L'Hopital rule says that if you've got a limit of a quotient here, a fraction over a fraction, and on, on a good day when certain conditions are satisfied. If this one is not working for you, you could just cover up the top here and take the derivative of it. Don't even worry about it. Don't do quotient rule. No, 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 no. Just take the derivative of the top. Take the to look at the bottom here and take the derivative of it. Again, there's no quotient rule. Nothing. This is incredibly simple. Just take the derivative of it. Boom. And then find the limit of that and see how that goes. Again, let me say this uh, one more time because I know you could rewind, but I'm going to say it again anyways. Under good conditions, which I haven't told you yet, um, I'll tell you when I want to tell you. Um, if you've got a quotient here and you're trying to find the limit and you get some crazy things like 0 over 0, infinity over infinity, or some undeterminate form, the L'Hopital says, hey, don't even worry about it. Just look at the derivatives. Take the derivative of the top and take the derivative of the bottom. On a good day, you've got yourself your derivative just like that. That, that my friends, I think that should be enough for us to do the first example. Watch this. If you try this one and you try it by the plug-in method uh, by the way this is a super 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 famous one we've done it with the engineers method we've done it using the squeeze theorem or I don't know if I did it on the video but I sure put it on the homework 
It's a super famous one to do by Squeeze Theorem. And, and today we're doing it by this method. Uh huh. Um, see, here's what L'Hopital would say. L'Hopital would say, hey, you, first you try your plug-in method. And if you plug it in, there's sine of zero, zero over zero. You say, ah, oh, man, zero over zero. And then you start crying and whining. Oh, no, indeterminate. Today, you get happy when you see zero over zero. Because that means you can use L'Hopital. Um, and to use L'Hopital, here's what you do. Uh, you cover the top. Sorry, you cover the bottom and you just take the derivative of the top. What's the derivative of the top? I'll let you think about it. The derivative of the top is cosine x. Oh, you got to be good with derivatives. I'm telling you, the last chapter was so important. What's the derivative of x? 1. And then you try your limit again here. Let's try it by plug-in method. What is the derivative? x goes to 0. x goes to 0. Cosine of 0? Um, that would be 1 over 1. Uh-huh. You see that? That's it. You're done. You took the derivative of the top, cosine, took the derivative of the bottom, 1. Just like that. I told you. Didn't I tell you? Here, I'll do it again. I'll do it again. Watch this. You first try your plug-in method here. Your plug-in method and you get 0, 0, say, oh, no. Before you would say, oh, no. Wah, wah, wah. Indeterminate form. Today, you look at zero, zero, say, yeah, mm, mm, mm. It's a sweet ride. And today, what we do is we just do L'Hopital here. L'Hopital would say, hey, you just cover the top or cover the bottom. The derivative of one is zero. Derivative of cosine is negative sine, but you've got a negative there, so it's just positive sine, sine x. The derivative of the bottom is just one. Uh huh. And then you try your plug in method again. Trying your plug-in method, x is going towards zero, so sine of zero, zero, zero over one is that's not an indeterminate. That's a good old zero, and you're done. Yippee yay! I told you, didn't I tell you? I told you. Man, I gotta sell a lot of math hand subscriptions to buy a car like that. All right, um, we haven't even gotten started. Watch this. You guys like L'Hopital yet or not? What do you guys rather do, this stuff? No. Whenever you can. I think, uh, well, plug-in method's pretty nice when everything's nice, but uh, when not, when not uh, L'Hopital is really, really nice. Here, again, you try the plug-in method. The plug-in method would give you uh, infinity over infinity. You say, eh, that's indeterminate. But today you get super happy because that means today that you can use L'Hopital. By the way, you can use it anytime you have zero over zero or infinity over infinity and some other things but I don't want to tell you the whole story yet but if you have zero I put it here on the side I'll put it right here if you have zero or zero you get happy okay if you got infinity over infinity you get happy because you, it's L'Hopital time for us by the way it doesn't matter if it's plus or minus well that that I should put a little disclaimer here I gotta tell you the rest of the story later but that's part of it here I got zero infinity or infinity I love it because now I can use L'Hopital L'Hopital is so easy. You take your hand and you cover the bottom. You take the derivative of that, 4. You take your hand, you cover the top, you take the derivative of that, that's 5. Oh my god, I can't believe I get paid to do this. So easy, so elegant, deep, clean. I told you. Didn't I tell you? That's why they pay me. Again, infinity, uh, this will give you infinity over infinity, and then you say, whoa, that's great, because every time I see infinity, infinity, or zero, zero, get happy, because uh, we can use L'Hopital time, L'Hopital. L'Hopital, you just cover the bottom, and that would give you 8x minus 4. Cover the top, that would give you 10x minus 100. And then you try your plug-in method again. Plug-in method gives you, oh no, infinity or infinity. Oh, before, you might have gotten started today. Oh, it's L'Hopital time. And so, so you say, okay, I'll do another L'Hopital on that one. I can write it over again. I'll just write it here. So limit as x goes towards infinity, 8x plus or minus 4 all over 10x minus 100 
And now I'm gonna use Lopetal again because I've got infinity over infinity. Here's how you do Lopetal. You cover the bottom, that just gives you eight. You cover the top, that gives you a 10. You're done, eight tenths. Yippee told you. You love Lopetal yet or not? I'm just getting started, watch this. Uh, again, you try your plug-in method and that gives you infinity over infinity, so you say, great, now you can use Lopetal. You cover the top, the bottom, that just gives you four. You cover the bottom, that gives you 10, X minus seven. Then you try your plug-in method again, that gives you uh, uh, four over infinity, which is equal to zero, you're done. Isn't that beautiful and clean and elegant? Perfection, beauty, and creativity in reasoning. That's what mathematicians sell. Starbucks, they sell coffee. Mathematicians, we sell perfection, beauty, and creativity in reasoning. Like you won't see anywhere else. All right, but enough about us. Let me see, let's talk more about L'Hopital. Uh, how about this one? Let me pause it here for just a second. I wonder if you could just do it, uh, if I waited like five seconds, yeah, you should be able to do it. <clears throat> you could pause the tape if you want and try it yourself. If not, let's get rolling here. Um, first thing you would do is you make sure that uh, at least some of the conditions are satisfied here. When you plug in infinity, you get infinity or infinity, you say yay! It means L'Hopital time, so <clears throat> L'Hopital time would go something like this. Cover the bottom. Forget about the bottom. The derivative of one over x, or sorry, the derivative of ln x is one over x. The derivative of x is one. And I could just, at that point, you can rewrite or do algebra or whatever you gotta do here. That's just, that's one over x. Okay, then you wanna try the plug-in method on here. The plug-in method on that would be, uh, let me think, infinity is going, x is going towards infinity, so it'll be one over infinity. And that, my friends, I reckon that's zero. Problem solved. Ain't that something, huh? Super, super elegant, super clean. Let's try it again. Uh, again, if you try the plug-in method, that would give you infinity over infinity. So you say, yay, I could use L'Hopital. I had to do that just to check. Uh, L'Hopital would give you, all you do is the, the derivative of the top, which is e to the x, and then the derivative of the bottom, which would be 2x plus 1. Then you try your plug-in method, and that gives you, by the way, all of these should have limits. Often I forget, but, uh, you know, I'm not perfect. Um, but uh, all of these should have limits as x goes to whatever this x was going towards. Okay, I'll put the limit there, look. Just this one time, x is going towards infinity. I Sometimes I forget to do this, but you should always have it. Anyways, I digress. You see why I don't do it? Because I digress. Plug-in method, <clears throat> infinity over infinity, whoa. That's not good, but it is good. Because now I can use L'Hopital. Um, every time I have infinity over infinity, or zero over zero, I can use L'Hopital. And some other condition that I'll tell you later. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, let's do a little L'Hopital. L'Hopital, the derivative of the top is e to the x. The derivative of the bottom is two. Now I try my plug-in method again. I get infinity over two, which is half of an infinity, which is still infinity. Done. This limit is equal to infinity. See how that works? Sometimes, the point is that sometimes you gotta keep doing L'Hopital a couple times. And sometimes, you, you know, um, you have to do it four or five times. And sometimes the whole process fails. I'll tell you now, I, th I think by now you're ready to know when it fails. If at any given point, I keep going, keep going, and this limit, the limit of f prime of x all over, whoa, f prime of x over g prime of x, if at any given point this limit does not exist, if at any point this limit does not exist, all the back steps that you took are, are off, you know, all bets are off, the process fails. Uh, L'Hopital applies when you've got two important conditions met. When this limit exists, and the other condition was whenever you have, you have to have either infinity or infinity or zero or zero. Those are the two things that you need. Two key ingredients. Infinity or infinity or 